We are looking at this biodiversity credit project and trying to see how we can extract value from our natural landscapes. And I think the real opportunity around this is traditionally we had carbon as an instrument um, to extract the value and to derive income for these landscapes, but it was very limited to proving additionality and it did not specifically reward what was happening on a conservation and a social side of things in, in the sense of intactness and what these big natural systems really bring as additional value to people, to countries and to the globe. So the biodiversity credits key opportunity is it uses carbon as a base, yes, certainly, but it adds these additional natural capital layers such as water, such as um, increasing fauna, increasing fauna, it encapsulates um, the social impact and the social dividends that is um, achieved and I think it's just a far better and a more encompassing instrument in, in which conservation and conservation impact is measured and then rewarded in terms of its income when you are able to sell it. And on that point I think one of the key challenges with biodiversity credits is the fact that at the moment we can't really sell them other than a, a willing buyer, willing seller type of environment. It's an unregulated space and there's a lack of let's call it transparency or third party verification standards and bodies that would be able to certify these projects. So projects like ours that are very pioneering uh, within the biodiversity credit space need to impose a lot of self-imposed rigor in terms of how we are actually measuring our impact and measuring the metrics of biodiversity gain over time and social impact and social gain over time. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that in the carbon space, which is seeing 20, 30 years of carbon development, you have all of these third party standards in place already. So that's one of the key things that we have to overcome. In terms of mitigating that, I think the devil lies in the detail. In if we as organizations are impact driven, opposed to being commercially driven, we have a far better chance of being authentic and really making a difference. So how do we overcome these? I think it's about developing the individual projects, metrics, all the different engagement mechanisms, um, community buy-in, community involvement, and, and really seeing communities as shareholders opposed to just being stakeholders, really seeing governments as being shareholders and partners rather than just stakeholders. And I think if we can impose those values and that rigor, we will be able to overcome the third party um, systems and procedures that are not quite ready or in place yet. And certainly in our project, we're looking forward to actually getting this one out the blocks. Uh, being a pioneer in the space and really setting an example of how we can be impact driven and not just commercial.